Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Let's just get right into it. When last we left our heroes, the party comprised of four players, Gurak, Asuna, Asami, and Elris, had almost doubled in size with the inclusion of Leah, Hidden Voice, and Orion. These party members had all been hired by various religious leaders around the town of Dagomir to travel north to a small fortress in the pass and investigate what had occurred to their town guard. They hadn't heard anything for over a week. The party going there and discovering signs of a huge battle having taken place with destruction all around, gate was bashed inwards. The guards seemed to have all been slaughtered in some sort of attack. They found evidence indicating that kobolds had been responsible for it. The party decided to return to town and inform their employers of what they had found. After having done that and being requested to go back up into the mountains and find the kobolds responsible and kill them, the party laid down for the night and prepared to take it on in the morning. This is where this session picks up. The party awakens, has a small breakfast, all seven of them, do some light shopping, picking up some arrows, some rations, some rope, that sort of stuff, some basic supplies that's very easy to get in town. And the party sets off for the Pelor Pass Fortress. It's a half day's march which passes uneventfully, except for one small incident where they picked up indications of a lizard tribe that lived south of the mountains. However, the lizard folk had not been a threat to them and were moving away from them, so they decided to leave it for another time and continued north. Heading into the fortress, they find the same wreckage and destruction that they had seen the last time they were there and begin to investigate around looking for a trail. The ranger is able to find this trail and guide the party uh, along a path up into the mountains. The path, as they begin to go along, narrows, starts to become more confined. They are on the side of a mountain, so there's a cliff on one side and a sheer drop on the other. But the party moves quite freely. It's not a narrow trail. It's just uh, very clearly a mountain trail. The party continues along this trail until they arrive in a spot that looks a little something like this. As they move through this particular spot of the trail, they are ambushed by kobolds, wouldn't you know? The kobolds come down off the mountainside and attack them on their flanks. There are uh, pit traps and snares set up along this trail that the party doesn't know about, but will soon discover. The party deals with these kobolds in a timely manner. They have some close calls where the spellcasters are getting attacked by all the kobolds coming in on the flanks. They have spots where heroes drop into pits along the trail that they weren't aware of. One of the kobolds actually escapes and disappears up into the mountains, chased by two uh, elves, wood elves, which hypothetically would have caught the kobold if not for the fact that the kobold had an escape plan prepared. He ran along the trail, took his sword, hit out a stick, and rocks tumbled down the trail behind him, hitting our two elven heroes and preventing them from continuing the hunt. Our heroes then regather together and continue along the trail, moving stealthily now that they are quite aware that there is some sort of threat in these mountains. As they move along, they come to a point where they think kobolds are around the corner. So they send the ranger and the rogue up ahead to scout. The rogue peeks around the corner and sees a group of about three or four kobold guards standing outside of a cave mouth opening. So the rogue and ranger fall back, alert the party, and the party prepares to ambush these kobolds. The party comes out and finds some more experienced armored kobolds, which I believe I mentioned in a previous video in the other campaign diary. They're basically reskinned goblins with slightly more hit points and slightly better armor, so they are treated as more of like a kobold soldier or experienced guard, as compared to a regular kobold, which is really not much. After another brief battle, the kobolds flee down into the tunnel, and the party decides that this would be a good opportunity to take a short rest. Now, at this point, I hadn't learned my rules about random encounters, so I didn't know what I was going to do about it, but I let them have their short rest. Two of the party members, however, decided that this was not the time for a short rest, and they go into the cave. These two heroes enter into this cave opening, and they find that the trail splits. They go one way, and they find a cave trail that continues along, and a opening on the side that's like a cave within the cave systems. They peek in there and don't see anything of interest. They go back and they go up the other way, and they discover the kobold warren, packed with about three or four kobolds in the main chamber and more kobolds in the back chambers, which means that it's initiative. Party outside hears the shouting of help by these two party members who go inside and begin to make their way inside to aid their allies. 
The two members inside now have to deal with roughly six kobolds and more are coming as they fight. One of the party members in the cave system falls for a pit trap that had been set up at the entrance to the kobold warrens because the kobolds had set up the trap specifically for anything that was heavier than a kobold to fall through. So this human soldier, uh, Orion, ends up falling through this pit trap and is stuck in the pit for a little while. However, it's a simple athletics check to get out. He's not trapped for very long, but this does leave Hidden Voice, the druid, as the only party member inside. The rest of the heroes come charging down as quick as they can. They get there in spits and bursts, and it's a huge open brawl in this central cavern with a river running through it. Orion kills more, almost dies. He is hit multiple times until he drops to zero, at which point he falls into this moving river, which then begins to carry him downstream out of this cave opening and also away from the heroes who could save his life. But the kobolds, having been lulled into a false sense of superiority due to the fact that there were only two heroes, were kind of caught in caught in this cave without any way to escape until after their numbers started to turn. I had set up, there were three caves, and they had traps in front of the main entrances that the heroes would use, and the kobolds would dive in and out of the warrens. But the kobolds didn't think to use these things that I had set up specifically for them, because there had only been two heroes, and then one of the heroes was down, and then there was only a few heroes, and then there were so many heroes that the kobolds just couldn't stand. Some of the kobolds, I think, tre- retreated away. They disappeared down a side warren, which allowed them to disappear from the entire cave system. It was a warren that was so small the heroes couldn't easily fit into it. Now, having successfully dealt with three main caverns full of kobolds in this encounter, the party is not feeling rough, but is certainly feeling... Uh, Warren, and they think the thing to do is to go down into the Kobold Warren, but instead of going down the Kobold Warren, they want to lure the Kobolds back out of the Warren. And they have some interesting ideas to do that. They decide to dig a pit, try and capture any Kobolds that come. They decide to start cooking a fire with some meat on it to try and lure them back with the food. And while they're investigating these caverns, one of the heroes discovers something. Gurak the orc barbarian, while investigating some sleeping bags or some food rations or the like, which I had actually put on the map as a marking to remind me that there was a pit trap, but at that point it didn't make sense for there to be a pit trap anymore, he finds an abandoned kobold baby. A little tiny little baby. Gurak, being an orc barbarian who was abandoned on the field of battle, adopted by and raised by a human family, decides that this is his moment to do the honorable thing, adopt the small kobold baby, and raise it the same way he had been raised by the humans. So he does this. This is great. I, I absolutely love that. I had actually put the kobold there to be found by either Hidden Voice, who had been looking for minions, or Leah Moonbrook, who had been interested in having pets. She wanted, she was taking a ranger specifically so she could have a pet animal. And I wanted to include this little kobold baby that she could train as sort of like a taster for that. See how she would do with things like that. But Gurak is the one who finds it. Gurak is the one who adopts it. He names it Mai and realizes that it's a female with some time and investigation and also knows that it will grow into a full-fledged kobold if treated properly. All of this takes over takes a long time as everyone's digging a pit trap and lighting fire and looking around these caves that they've explored. Orion and Hidden Voice, who are both feeling, I guess, bored, decide that they are going to go down the main passageway further into the cave system. Asami, the dwarven cleric, also decides to go with them, having remembered that the last time these two went off alone, one or both of them almost died. So, the party then splits again. Those three heroes go down the tunnel passageway, and they discover yet more kobolds. These kobolds appear to be some of the best kobolds in the group. There is one kobold in very thick breastplate armor with a longsword who sits atop a throne with a locked wooden chest nearby, as well as roughly six guards standing with him. And he declares... As these heroes enter into his cavern, the Dark One will never take the Broken Fang tribe! So, this is the point where I get to show off a new feature that I added onto this after some comments were made in my last video on this playlist. This is something that the players need to pay attention to, but probably don't. 
This was a moment where the kobolds were declaring themselves independent from something called the Dark One. The kobolds believe that the heroes who came in and slaughtered a lot of them are servants of someone known as the Dark One. Something to keep in mind, Dark One is not a friendly name and probably not a good dude. The party doesn't quite pick up on this, I don't think, especially due to the fact that they've been split. Three of them are facing off against a large group of kobolds. But I have no choice. It's initiative, and they go into a battle. The heroes ready themselves. They're going to throw down. They're ready to do this. Kobold Chieftain wins initiative, rushes forward, longsword in hand, slashes into the Dwarven Cleric Asami, and critical hits her. And he deals enough damage to take her from full health to nothing like that. The remaining two heroes, Orion and Hidden Voice, decide that this is probably not a fight they should be fighting. Hidden Voice throws up Entangle, grabs Asami, and begins dragging her back down the tunnel. Orion takes off ahead of them and gets partway down the tunnel before shouting, Need some help down here! At which point, the other four members realize that something's going on and rush to go help. The four heroes, Gurak, Leah, Asuna, and Elris, are in the cavern and hear the shout, and most of them begin to charge down the tunnel towards the caravan. They all roll their initiatives, and battle begins. Elris, however, moves and enters into the kobold warren, which they had been digging a pit trap in front of and lighting a fire and trying to lure kobolds out of. He thinks, with a bit of metagaming I noticed afterwards, he thinks if he goes into this passageway, he can find his way around to the other side and spit out of a passageway that had been installed in the kobold chieftain's lair. Now, the kobold chieftain's lair had a small little escape hatch which led to a small chamber near the river, and the kobold chieftain, if he got to low enough health and was desperate enough, he was going to flee down that passageway to the river, jump in, and swim to freedom. Because I drew it in a very faint marker with yellow, I forgot that it was there in the middle of the battle, so the kobold chieftain didn't actually use it. But Elris's player thinks that he can find his way to the chamber through the kobold warren, because his player can see the whole map. So he heads into there, and yet again, that doesn't work. The player ends up trapped in the Kobold Warrens for most of the battle, as well as for most of what happens after the battle. They are down two players at this point. Cleric's been knocked out. Monk has decided to go off on his own little side quest. The heroes are scrambling, trying to get themselves back together. They head into it, and they fight these Kobold Guards. They end up in this bottleneck where they're backed up into the passageway, desperately trying to shoot in front of their allies. Kobolds are fighting their way out of the entangle, and the chieftain is standing strong and proud, having one shot one of these heroes with a critical hit. Heroes were dropped, brought back up. The druid used a cure wounds to pick up the cleric, who then used her cure wounds to keep the party up. Spells were spent, arrows were flung, battle was joined, and eventually the heroes emerge victorious. The Kobold Chieftain lies dead, as well as his entire retinue. And the party celebrates. Around this point, I feel a little generous with Elris, who had literally gotten himself lost, and I let him find his way out of the Kobold Warren. Like, right as he was about to make the wrong turn to head away, I point out, there's something behind you, you can find your way out. And I, I had a map. I had a map all written up of the Kobold Warrens. But he just... Uh... He didn't write it down, he went down different turns, he found care. He found chambers and looked through them thinking there were kobolds in there, which there weren't. But he comes back out eventually, the party all get together, and they decide to open up this chest. Not locked, it's not, not difficult. They open it up. Kobolds set traps. Party either didn't remember this or didn't acknowledge this. A crossbow set to fire. If the chest was opened, immediately shoots Asuna in the chest, dropping her to zero hit points and knocking her unconscious again. At this point, Cleric's all out of spells. So they have to patch her and make sure that she's okay, at which point they open up the chest and they find a lot of silver, some gold, a few potions, and a note. This note is a communication to the Kobold Chieftain, and it is written in a code. It is written in Draconic, but it's written in a code. So I had a little bit of fun swapping out the notes as they passed it around. I had three notes written up. There was the regular note, 
which had it spelled out exactly what it said, written in English, so that way if they ever got it translated, they would know what it says. A note written in English letters, but encoded. Basic Caesar code, it wasn't very difficult to crack, but it made it more interesting, for me at least. And then they also had the Draconic, where I literally spent some time writing it out in Draconic for those who couldn't speak Draconic. So I would pass the one that was written in Draconic to people who couldn't speak Draconic because then all they would see would be Draconic letters. And I would pass the one that was encoded to the one person, Elris, who could speak Draconic and he would see encode. He wouldn't understand what it meant because it was encoded. And then I had the actual note tucked away for when the party actually got the thing translated. So the party has successfully killed the kobolds, gotten some treasure, and claimed the kobold chieftain's head. So they decide that they're going to rest up for the night. They lay down some bedrolls, they have a small meal together, and they set up a watch, which is good. I asked them about it. And they prepare to rest up, take a long rest in this kobold ca cave. However, I had decided if they stick around for long enough, they were going to be attacked by some creatures. Some very, very nasty creatures. If you are interested to hear what happens to the heroes against these new creatures, then tune in next time. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed my ramblings, feel free to leave a like. Uh, leave a comment down in the blah blah down below. I'm happy to answer any questions about my campaign, any details that I feel would make sense to reveal, uh, any sort of miscommunications that have happened between me and you. Just leave a comment. I'm happy to answer it. Until the next time with new monsters and negotiations between religious leaders. Until next time, I hope you guys have a terrific day and I hope to see you guys very soon next time. And take care.